Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. As many of you may know, um, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook has been throwing a hissy fit tantrum about um, TSU or Sue, whatever you'd like to call it, and you know, has put a full-blown ban on the thing, and, you know, it's been uh, generating a lot of media buzz lately, so on and so forth. Now, most of the articles that I have encountered about it give um, what, in my opinion, is the correct version of events. Um, like, for example, CNN Money, RT News, My Article on Somatic, uh, Blog Job, Info Bunny, ZDNet, Boing Boing, etc. Um, I feel these are and these are accurate representations to the best of my knowledge. Now, of course, when it comes to any new paradigm, um, the old paradigm is going to try to struggle for continuity and survival and is going to flat out reject um, the new paradigm. Um, many people think, um, well, because we're taught to think this, but many people are under the illusion that when new paradigms come in, you know, be it uh, ways of viewing the world or the universe or new technologies or what have you, people imagine that there's, there's this huge majority consensus that takes place and it's just this happy, jolly thing that, oh, everybody agreed this is great and let's do it. Well, nobody called a convention and said, hey, um, we're going to invent the cell phone, but not if the majority doesn't approve of us doing it. So we're going to take a vote here on the world population and, and see who wants the cell phone invented or the internet or the personal computer or smartphones or, uh, you know, and just about anything you can think of. As a matter of fact, way back in the day, when things such as electricity and the automobile were new, there were people who thought that, well, in in the best case of the pessimism, they thought that it was completely unnecessary. Oh, human beings will never need that. Scoff, scoff. Oh, horse and buggies are good enough. What say you? And in the absolute worst case of the pessimism, it's like, those newfangled contraptions are evil. They're from the devil. <laughs> you know, so obviously it's not like new paradigms come out and everybody's just like, oh, cool. We're just going to drop our old ways of thinking about the world and just jump right in on this new paradigm. So, of course, even though most of the articles I've seen so far have been on par with uh, proper research into what's actually going on and the way things work. Um, this article from Mashable is the first one that I have seen so far that has a really big logical fallacy going on. Um, this article is by Carissa Bell, <clears throat> and it goes like this. Facebook has stopped allowing its users to mention the name of other of another social network on its apps and website, but it's not for the reasons you might think. This site is tsu.co, an invite-only social network that is premised on the idea of sharing ad revenue with its users. The problem, it seems, is the site became a huge source of spam on Facebook so the company blocked its users from mentioning the URL. Typing tsu.co anywhere in Facebook and uh, Insta, or anywhere in Facebook, Instagram, or Facebook Messenger results in various error messages that let you know your comment won't be posted. This, uh, this, there doesn't seem to be a, a a similar ban on WhatsApp though. I've never heard of that. Anyway. The problem apparently is TSU's business model, which is premised on financially rewarding its users based on how much they share. TSU keeps 10% of ad revenue generated by users' content, while the remaining 90% distributed among the users who, who invited that friend. 
If that model sounds familiar, it's because it's a lot like how pyramid schemes work. The Sue Algo. User A invites user B, who invites user C, who invites user D. Part 1. $100 of the earned revenue is generated from user D's original content. Part 2. $10, 10% is distributed to TSU. Part 3. 90% is distributed to, to, the, to the users that use, users using the rule of infinite thirds. So basically, you know, this person is claiming that, you know, TSU is using infinite math. Um, Facebook says sites like TSU encourage spammy behavior, which violates the rules for developers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Notably, the company's Facebook page, which has more than 11,000 fans, is up and running. URLs um, uh, posted their link back in the page itself rather than the company website, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, first of all, TSU or SU does not use infinite math. All it's doing is dividing the dollar, and it divides it into four parts. The first part is obviously that before mentioned, um, 10%, or sorry, was it five parts? Anyway, there's a, it's divided by a few users, and then you know the 10%, like they mentioned, goes to TSU. But the buck does stop. It's simply a division of the dollar. That's it. So it's no more a pyramid scheme than cutting up a pie. Now, I looked up some graphics on how pyramid schemes work. Um, you can see the math there, 636, 216, 1,296, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera till it gets to more than the U.S. population, going down until it gets to more than the world population. Um, the other graph here is you send me $5, have five of your friends send me $5, have each of your, your, friend, have each of your friends get five more friends to send me $5. Uncle Brian gets rich quick. Um, this is completely not at all the model <laughs> that um, TSU works on whatsoever. All TSU does, or Sue, whatever you want to call it, it divides up the dollar. It's like cutting up a pie. That's it. Plus, a pyramid is a top-down structure. When you have uh, people... Um, add themselves under you and other people, you know, add more people and so on and so on. What it actually forms is a family tree of sorts. They even call it, you know, child and parent and, you know, similar terminology like that. Where the hell did I put my TSU or Sue? tab here. I had it right along here somewhere. Okay, I'll just open up a new one so that I can give you a little quick demonstration here. Alrighty. I'm going to go into my family tree here, as it's called, just to show you. Um, so as you can see, I have 2,022 friends so far, eight new children, 38 children total, a total of 495 in my network, and um, 1,007 followers. And as you can see, you know, wait, I'll click on Richard Hamilton, view descendants, and you know, view, you can view descendants uh, down lower for when it has it, so on and so forth. Actually, let me pick one where I know for a fact there's going to be a lot of um, descendants on there. Okay, one second here. Yeah, Sammy Broker. Um, Sammy Broker has a bunch of people under her, and then we go to Jeremy Ward, who has like... bunches of people under him, then, you know, you can view under the 
Nikola Tesla page, and then there's so on, and it, it goes down deeper and deeper. This is just a family tree. This is not a pyramid, and it branches out similarly the way you might expect, like, you know, Ancestry.com or something to branch out. That is not a pyramid. I mean, if if human reproduction is a top-down pyramid, then we're in a lot of trouble because pretty soon we're going to all be just a, a bunch of inbred fucks that are just beating each other over the head with hammers. Now, with a pyramid scheme also, you have to put money into it. Um, Sue does not ask anybody for one red brick and cent. So there's no money going in. And yes, there actually is money going out. Otherwise, videos like this would not be able to exist. I'm going to prove here that Sue actually does pay their freaking users. Here you go. Hello, beautiful people. Just finished up a big bowl of delicious guacamole and I discovered this came today it's an envelope from 379 West Broadway New York New York I have a feeling it's a check but there's also this round object in the envelope as well so I'm not really sure what that could be. So let's find out. stickers so that's three hundred dollars more than I ever got from Facebook or Twitter or Instagram so that's uh, 600 total three different checks I'll be holding out for 400 on the next one and so share this with everyone let them know the power of the tsunami I love you all have an awesome day now, if this was a pyramid scheme, he wouldn't have been getting paid nothing. You would have seen the typical pyramid scheme effect where are only the people at the top, and in this case, if Sue was a pyramid scheme, obviously Sue itself would be up at the top. <coughs> only the people up at the top are getting paid, and everybody else is just getting the shaft. And you totally don't see this happening. All you literally see is ad revenue sharing um, on Facebook and other social networks. They put advertisements on the page. Um, you know, the Facebook and whoever else, you know, makes money from this advertisement. And do they share that revenue with the users? No, obviously they do not. What separates TSU from platforms like that is that TSU does share the revenue with its users. Now, if you notice on the Mashable site, they say they keep saying Facebook says a Facebook spokesperson person told Mashable, etc., etc., etc. But they did not talk to any um, actual Sue users at all, and they didn't they didn't talk to Sue at all, and they didn't really investigate anything or, or talk to anybody else um, to really see what was going on. All they did was talk to the Facebook spokesperson and that's it. That is literally it. That's literally all they did. And when you're trying to do investigative research, you need to look at all sides of the story, not just one side. If you only look at one side, that's not doing research. That's called cherry picking. That's called picking only the results you want to see 
while ignoring everything else. And so I also want to look at some of um, some of the other articles. And of course, I you know I posted this uh, this big one that I made on DeviantArt, why Facebook is terrified, and I have a whole bunch of other different videos and things like that. And I also link to all these other different sorts of articles. Now, one common denominator here with all of this <clears throat> is that when um, Zuckerberg threw his hissy fit, what he did was any pictures, video, posts, whatever, that had a tsu.co link in it, um, he totally nuked out that content. Now, according to the normal Facebook policy, when sites are blocked, and I've seen this time and time and time again, and this is completely normal, um, when they block a link, they just block a link. So if you have a video or a photo or whatever, that happens to contain that link, you get a little pop-up box thing saying, yeah, sorry, you know, you can't share this. Whereas when Facebook first implemented its so-called block, which wasn't so much a block at all, it's just a total censorship maneuver, I know that I got a crap load of, of my own pictures from the Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy page. I got a crap load of those instantly nuked. Um, as well as um, Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy video episodes that I had uploaded into Facebook videos. Um, any of those that had um, TSU, Sue links, also got nuked, just completely freaking nuked, just gone, boom, thermonuclear detonation. Now, if this had just been a normal block or ban or what have you, then all of that would have remained, and whenever I would try to share any of that, it would have been, sorry, you can't share this because it contains a blocked link. Please correct the problem if you want to be able to share it. Please remove the link. Never have they decimated people's content before until now. <clears throat> and, I mean... <clears throat> there have been artists and, and musicians and celebrities and, and work-at-home moms and regular people and just everybody all across the whole gamut that got content completely freaking nuked indiscriminately as malicious content. Just poof, gone, bye. So, you know, that's another way you could tell this is a crock of shit. Now, according to CNN Money, try mentioning the social media website tsu.co on Facebook or Instagram or even in a private conversation on Facebook Messenger. It won't work. Um, let's see here. And it goes through the, the usual that all of um, the valid article, well, I won't say valid because the word, all the word valid means is that it exists. Let's just say all of the accurate and thoroughly researched articles, you know, basically start off on, on this this basic sort of intro. Facebook claims TSU links are spam that are annoying the community. Um, TSU thinks Facebook is a bully trying to kill off um, competition. Um, and that does seem to be true given their strong arm tactics. TSU is a tiny social network, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm looking to go down to some of the extra added information. Um, okay, there we go. Um, <clears throat> CNN Money spoke to a dozen TSU or SU users. Most are photographers, models, and other artists drawn to what they say is TSU's more equitable pay-for-content program. Most of them haven't made a dime yet, but they feel this Facebook block is unfair. Yes, it does take time to make money. That's been the case in every paradigm with everything. People who are impatient and expect it to just rain money instantly are fucking idiots. Claudia Everest is a 47-year-old cancer survivor living in northern England. To pass the time during chemotherapy, she started a dog a day, drawing 25 dogs every day and selling her artwork from home. 
She's furious that Facebook deleted every post in which she ever mentioned TSU.co, 7,500 by her estimate. Quote, Facebook either completely removed or labeled them as malicious content, she said. If you take a look at my cartoons, I think you will agree that the idea that my work is malicious is laughable. Carolina Franco, a 28-year-old model in Colombia, thinks Facebook's strategy is an attempt to keep its users from flocking to a competitor. Very few people even know about TSU, she said. I don't believe that Facebook and Instagram want Sue to go viral. It would cost them a lot of money. Bingo. Spot on. Um, let's look at another article. RT News which tends to be a very reputable um, source of news, um, mainly because they typically understand how to differenti differentiate between actual news and what is just their opinion, and they tend to research things very freaking thoroughly. Oh, and by the way, DeviantArt has also blocked them for just no damn good reason. Um, notice that, that you know places like Twitter, Pinterest, etc. have not blocked, DSU at all. Um, okay. No soup for you. Moving in on RT. And again, I'll skim through and skip the usual repetitive obvious of explaining what Sue is and what Facebook has done. Because that's just duplicate information that you know each of these articles has. I want to go down to the unique information. Okay, here's another mention of Dog Day. Let's see here. It has had quite an impact on myself and my business. Ever is told ZDNet, the whole idea that Facebook have labeled my dogs as malicious content is laughable. Um, on a larger scale, rapper 50 Cent, who has more than 38 million likes on his Facebook profile page and, one, and 131,000 TSU followers, posted a video on his Facebook page in July that included it. <clears throat> included a direct link to access the video on Sue.co. That post was one of many Sue-related posts deleted by Facebook. Sue founder Zubchak estimated last month that 5 to 10 million items have been removed from Facebook, both automated and manual. We are investigating the extent of what's going on between Facebook and Sue, he told ZDNet last month. We have contacted them, but they have not responded from any of the three platforms which have removed any historical mentions of Sue. We encourage users to see if any content has been deleted and to contact these platforms to find out where their con why their content has been censored, so on and so on. So. You could see there is actually some investigative journalism going on. Um, you know, the new sites that are being equitable are asking for the details from all of the different sides of the story. They're looking to Facebook for information. They're looking to sue for information. Um, they're looking to sue users for information. Um, you know, they're, they're checking out all of these different sources. And I will say that the rest of the articles here that I've listed, you know, pretty much have the same basic data and pretty much come to the same basic conclusions, phrased in all different ways, various people talk to, so on and so forth. So these articles that I'm posting here in my main article on DeviantArt, um, you know, these are just uh, me keeping track of which blogs have actually bothered doing some investigative research. Whereas I'm obviously not going to um, list Mashable's mashing of the facts using logical fallacy, but because I don't want to cherry pick data either, hence why I'm making this video 
to where you can see the Mashable post, you can see what they've done, um, you know, and I'm cross-referencing to other things and explaining things thoroughly. So I don't feel that hiding the opposition's uh, opinions is any better than, you know, Facebook trying to censor the crap out of everybody. So I'm not going to be a hypocrite and implement a double standard. So obviously, this list is a listing of what I feel is well-compiled research data. But again, I do think that it is fair to, you know, mention the sites that go into these logical fallacies and explain why I think they're logical fallacies and so on and so forth. Um, also, I just right quick... I got a thing in my gallery that goes over what is and isn't bad science. Um, I just want to go over that right quick. Come on. I automatically came up in there. As you can see, I referenced that quite a bit. Okay. Okay. A rough guide. Uh, yeah, rough guide. Yeah, rough guide to spotting bad science. One, sensationalized headlines. Headlines of articles are commonly designed to entice viewers. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I think my seasonal allergies are kicking in. Designed to entice viewers into clicking on and reading the article. At best, they oversimplify the findings of research. At worst, they, sens they sensationalize and misrepresent them. Obviously, we can see that Mashable did an oversimplification. They did not really do the investigative research that they should have done. <clears throat> misinterpreted results. News articles sometimes distort or misinterpret the findings of research for the sake of a good story, intentionally or unintentionally. If possible, try to read the original research rather than relying on the article based on it for information. Well, that's two for two so far. Although I highly doubt this person has some sort of evil plotter conspiracy to side with Facebook and undermine Sue. So I'm going to presume for the moment that, to the best of my knowledge, the person who wrote the Mashable article misinterpreted the results unintentionally, um, subconsciously based on her own paradigms about how, oh, you know, um, life is struggle and suffering and nothing comes easy. So therefore, anything that seems to be a benefit to humanity, that seems to be helpful as opposed to destructive, must be a scam. There's a lot of people that have that paradigm going on. So, you know. <clears throat> Three, conflict of interest. Many companies employ scientists to carry out in public research. Whilst this does not necessarily invalidate research, it should be analyzed with this in mind. Research can also be misrepresented, um, yeah, misrepresented for personal or financial gain. Um, in this case, I mean, because it's obviously talking about, um, you know, basically only stating one side of the story, um, the fact that this person or this group or whatever this person is in regards to Mashable, whoever they are, um, they seem to only consult Facebook's side of the story and no other side. So that definitely falls in conflict of interest. If you're trying to write as factual of an article as possible to give people actual news, then obviously this person is riding the fail boat and they did not do that. Um, correlation and causation. Be wary of confusion of correlation and causation. Correlation between two variables doesn't automatically mean one causes the other. Global warming has increased since the 1800s and pirate numbers decreased, but lack of pirates doesn't cause global warming. Exactly. So, um, 
if she scores on number four as well because she thinks that because there is a revenue sharing system that has a particular structure and that structure has labeled categories oh it must be a pyramid scheme because well you know you're dividing this up and it's invite only and you know and P you can have people under you and people under them and so on and so forth so oh you know because it seems that way then you know it must be a pyramid scheme so it is that type of assumption five speculative language speculations from a research are just that speculation be on the lookout for words such as may could might and others as it is unlikely the research provides hard evidence for any conclusions they proceed um, I'd say that this person went straight out of speculation and into complete assumption. Like, you know, to claim that absolutely that, yeah, Sue is running on a pyramid scheme model. No, they're totally not. And it doesn't take much research to determine that. Six, sample size too small. In trials, the smaller a sample, a sample size, the lower the confidence in the results from that sample. Conclusions drawn should be considered with this in mind, though in some cases small samples are unavoidable. It may be cause for suspicion if a large sample is possible but avoided. Okay, well, in the case of journalistic research, the tiny sample in this case was only talking to Facebook, and that's it. Um, the person who wrote this obviously did not try to ask the opinions of other Sioux users. They did not try to get information from Sioux themselves. They did not try to get information from any source other than Facebook. So yes, the sample size of the information is way too freaking small. <clears throat> Seven, unrepresentative samples. In human trials, researchers will try to select individuals that are representative of a larger population. If the sample is different from the population as a whole, then the conclusions may well also be different. And I think generally, vaguely, you can, you know, kind of in parallel, euphemistically compare it to what was just done here. But I think number seven is talking more literally, like when... You know, you're talking about how chemicals or herbs affect the body or, you know, how, you know, material A interfaces with material B or whatever. They're, they're talking about, you know, physical, um, tangible things. Number eight, no control group used. In clinical trials, okay, again, we'll skip that because, again, they're talking about physical things. They're talking about chemical, mineral, you know. Um, that sort of thing. No blind testing being used. Again, that applies to physical, chemical, mineral, you know, hands-on sort of stuff. Um, Ten, cherry-picked results. This involves selecting data from experiments which supports the conclusion of the research whilst ignoring those that do not. If a research paper draws conclusions from a selection of its results, not all, it may be cherry-picking. And that's exactly what um, this lady did, only looked at the one and only singular source that seemed to, in my opinion, conform to what appear to be her personal views um, as opposed to actually doing the research. She appears to be one of those people, again, that thinks, oh, no, no, it's only valid business if it's misery and suffering and slavery, but you can't actually have a business that helps anybody or works efficiently with equity or in any beneficial way. No, 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 it's got to be the rat race, dog eat dog, blah, 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 blah. A lot of people have that uh, paradigm, and they will defend it in everything they do. 11, unpredictable results. Results should be replicatable, replicable by independent research and tested over a wide range of conditions. Okay, again, that's talking about, you know, physical, you know, stuff. 12, journals and citations. Research published to major journals will have undergone a review process but can still be flawed. 
so should still be evaluated with these points in mind. Similarly, large numbers of citations do not always indicate that the research is highly regarded. Exactly, which is why I used other data, such as um, Kevin Hinkle's video here, where he's literally showing that, okay, he got the check in the mail, he's opening up the envelope, so on and so forth. Look, there, there it is. Um, this video so far appears in absolutely no article that I've seen, but it's a video that I know exists, so I used it. So, you know, that's obviously going in the direction of, you know, looking towards more extended information. Um, I would also, if you, if you want to look more into um, how to research things in an unbiased way, if truth is actually what you're looking for and not to justify a pre-existing paradigm, um, there is a YouTube video I have, um, PSEC 2015, um, Identifying Mental Malware or something to that effect. Um, hold on, P sec. Let's just do a search. Twenty fifteen, mental malware. So you put that in, and boom, there we go, right at the top. P sec twenty fifteen, featuring Larkin Lo the Larkin Rose in removing mental malware. Five PhD summary. Okay, so this one will be one that will show you, um, you know, basically the specifics of how to research in as unbiased of a way as possible and avoiding cherry-picked results and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, everything we're just talking about. So that's definitely a good video. And, of course, Larkin Rose does have his own YouTube channel, and I would, you know, suggest that you check that out and subscribe to that. Um, he's a pretty logical dude. He's got a lot of really good shit on there. So um, it's always a pleasure to hear him talk about stuff because he is just completely just logical to the point and he doesn't fuck around. So, yeah. Um, I hope that this video has um, helped everybody and has been a source of both information and entertainment. Obviously, I think it's funny that because of this hissy fit that uh, Zuckerberg is toddler tantruming about, this is going. This is basically the best advertisement that he could have ever given his competitor. So you know, oh, and it's also cited in some of these articles and stuff. And according to Sebastian Zumchek, that um, you know, Facebook happily allows porn sites to go unblocked. <laughs> and their content is not maliciously, you know, deleted. Um, so long-term offending porn sites do not get taken care of. Yet, little old Suda CO, <clears throat> thermonuclear obliteration for the first time ever that I know of, at least. I've never seen them just obliterate pictures and video and links and things like that. Usually it'll just prevent you from sharing it and say, oh, sorry, you can't share this because it contains a link that is probably dangerous or might be or whatever. So please remove the offending link, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, it's just, you know, <laughs> it is so freaking obvious as to what's going on here, I swear. And, of course, um, you have to have at least a hundred bucks generated minimum in order to be able to cash out from TSU. So um, once I have enough to cash out and I have my physical check in hand, I too will be posting a video of that so that um, you guys can see that uh, you know that physical evidence to you know further illustrate that there's. Nothing nasty going on here. Well, plenty nasty going on in Facebook, apparently. But nothing nasty going on with Sue. So, yep. Yeah. Um, that concludes uh, this edition of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. Thank you for watching. Have an awesomely wonderful day, evening, whatever it is in your part of the world. And catch you later. Bye-bye.